stuff? Well, well, you know what? I know Sheila, I know. Yeah. Um, General, oh, we're live now. I can say so. Those that are tuning in live on the Gratitude and Appreciation Summit page right now, you have got alerted that you are now part of the second annual Gratitude and Appreciation Summit. And there was one section of this summit that um, both Kathy and I felt was going to be a powerful message for the next, oh, I don't know, 30, 35, 40 minutes. And that's a panel of parents talking about raising children with gratitude and appreciation, kindness, love, and acceptance. So I'd love for you, each one, we'll start with um, Faisal, because you're in the middle out there in uh, Zoomy land, to introduce yourself and what you do, please. Oh, Faisal, you are on mute. Or can we not hear them in? There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you, Faisal. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Yeah, my name is Faisal uh, Ismail. I, um, I'm a physiotherapist by profession um, and uh, a coach and a parent, a father, husband, friend, all that kind of stuff. So just. Uh, not defined by one hat, let's just say. Beautiful. Love that. And your your son was magnificent this morning. You're going to be so proud of him watching back. Oh, he's the, he's the best. And next up, Sheila, please uh, completely introduce yourself and where you are coming from, please. Hi, everyone. I am Sheila Weir, and I am a mother, first and foremost, to an 18-year-old wild child boy uh, with special needs. And I'm also a coach. I like to kind of call myself a burnout coach uh, who works with women who have kind of uh, hit their max, because I can certainly speak that language with uh, along with them. So that's who I am. Perfect. And next up is Bree, please. Hi, I'm also a mother. I have a 21, 20, and 16 year old daughter. I am from Edmonton, Alberta, but currently in Vancouver. And I run a virtual assistant agency where we like to team up with our clients and help them with the overwhelm in their business and to be supported with their, their great things that they're bringing to the world. Perfect. And do, Mark, okay. And then Robbie, you're up next in studio here. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Robbie, I'm a motivational speaker and of course the founder of Lenibor Academy. I'm the father of a wonderful 16 year old daughter. She's in the crowd watching us right now. Love you princess always. And yeah, it's, that's amazing, you know? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, thank you. Oh, and we, we so appreciate it. right off the top that you uh, gave us the space. You're a venue sponsor um, today. Thank you. So let's start with Sheila, please. And the question is, is what are your family's gratitude practices? No, I don't know that we have uh, structured gratitude practices, but I'll tell you what we do on a regular basis in our house. Um, we are one of the families that sits down to um, meals at supper time together, and during that time, we reconnect with each other. Mm. And one of the questions that we will always ask is, what happened today at work, school, whatever, um, that, that made a difference in your day? What really stood out to you? hopefully in a positive way that's the way we're trying to guide it is in a positive way but sometimes it's it sometimes it's not sometimes it's in ways that challenge us and that allows us to practice some gratitude on what are we thankful for that we mm -hmm. didn't wake up this morning realizing we were thankful for so our number one practice in this house is to talk about it at, at supper hour and um and just to really hold space for each other as we're going through each other's days on what worked for us that day and maybe maybe what didn't work for us so much that day too take that over to Robbie now here in studio so what practices does your family have for gratitude all right first of all I'm not living with my family right I'm here in Canada I, my family back home now we do spend a lot of time on the phone as often as possible you know messaging you know FaceTime and we always in touch with what's going on in each other's life right you know my daughter I mentioned her amazing amazing girl she made parenting very easy for me I, I, I know that from she was a baby you know and 
you know, in terms of gratitude, you know, she, she's very appreciative, you know, as I said, she, she made parenting easy, you know, you know, she's, and for us, our parents, you know, we, we support her, we support each other, and it's, you know, we, very loving, you know, very loving people, supportive and appreciative of what we do each other and, you know, trying to be grateful at every time. That's where, perfect. I, and I love, I love how you said we love on each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's the basis right there mm -hmm. is putting a loving on each other mm -hmm. right off the bat. So that's perfect. So let's take it um, to you, um, Bree. What are your family gratitude practices? Mm -hmm. Like Sheila, we do a check-in at dinner and we will like check in and see how the day's day is and what are the things that we're celebrating that day. We do quite often, we'll do like family day night and mm -hmm. together with my kids who don't live in the house and do, and every time we do, we're just like, we'll do like a cheers and hey, we're so grateful you're here or taking moments to pause so whenever we're doing family experiences together and just being like, you know, we're so grateful that this is our life or mm -hmm. we're so grateful that we're able to do these things together or that we're able to we have a lot of really open conversations and talk to each other about a lot of things and you know are the first to like own up if we've done something that mm. has not been the right way to deal with things and things like that so we do a lot of that and then we once we, we have those moments we'll stop and be like hey you know we're really grateful that we can have these conversations because they're not conversations we ever had with our parents and that we can ever have them even now and so just taking moments to even be grateful for the different types of relationships that we have with them and the changes that we're making and want to promote with them. Thank you. That, oh, that's so beautiful. Um, uh, Faisal, the question now is to you. Oh, you just got a heart. You got a heart from Miss Sheila. Oh, um, <laughs> you, you can hear me now, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, well, it's a very interesting. This is a very interesting question, I find, because um, I, I always talk to my kids, as you know, um, with a with a strong philosophical um, foundation in terms of being in the moment and making sure they bring meaning to every second of their day. Mm -hmm. And you know, for instance, they when they were little kids, I kind of if we have infused in them, um, a, a, you know, a, a daily um, prayer that they say every day. Uh, which includes being thankful for what they have. You know, we are from East Africa. We, we were a refugee family that came here with nothing and are now in this beautiful country with so much that, uh, that offers so much to us um, that a lot of people take for granted. They don't know how many parts of the world live. And so we are very, very fortunate to be here and to get what we get and to have what we have. And so, you know, I do hammer that home with them and for them to really put a lot of meaning into every moment because it could be the last time you say bye to someone in the morning. Mm. And so make sure you say bye properly and be thankful for that meal that you have because that might be the last meal you ever have, right? So it's always just bringing all of that right to the moment and enjoying it and being in it and being thankful for it. Oh my gosh. I, I have goosebumps. I'm going to be one big big goosebump by the end of our conversations here. Um, the next question I'd love to pose to Bree, because you have a very bubbly um, daughter that we met earlier and so incredibly focused on, on life, is when your child is feeling down about life or themselves, how do you lift them up? The first thing that we tend to do is just let her talk it out, like without mm. judgment, without fear of being in trouble for whatever she's going to share or anything like that. So just letting her openly share with us how she's feeling, what's going on, and then just kind of, you know, I, we ask in our family, what do you need from us right now? Do you want support? Do you just want a hug? Do you want a solution? Do you want us to help you, like, come up with some possible things that would help you through the situation? Or do you just need a distraction for a minute? Like, what do you need right now? And if it's a distraction, we'll go for a walk. We'll do something that she enjoys. Mm. And we find, like, getting far out in nature especially helps ground her. And so, and it's good for all of us, right? Kind of get a change of perspective. And then come back to the situation and then, you know, discuss 
you know, what are some of those different perspectives in the situation, if it has to do with other people, or what are some different solutions we could come up with, and what is the one that feels good to you? And so just kind of helping her do that, and then, you know, like finding the moments in that that you can be grateful for, like, you know, grateful that you can have these conversations, grateful that you can go to those person and sort that out, or deal with however you need to in the conversation that works for you. So I'm going to pose this to, to Robbie because you you uh, you said to us your your daughter's at a distance, mm -hmm. and when you I'm sure every phone call is not sunshine and roses um, right, right. with your daughter. Yeah, yeah. Is how do you lift your daughter up from a distance when she's feeling down on a conversation or with her life? I I, I know it is it is very very challenging, and I know my daughter first of all she. She doesn't talk much about what's going on with her, and as a result, I have to look for signals. Uh -huh. right? And you know, you know, nothing bad. It's just she's very quiet. But I look for signals, and then whenever I see them, you know, I, I, I you know, like, hey, what's going on? Let's talk. What's going on? You know, and dig into her, try to get her comfortable, um, comf you know, comfortable and relaxed and open, and she will talk, and she will talk about what's going on with her and then and there you know it's all about comfort comforting her make first of all letting her know that it's okay you know it's okay it's okay and we'll work work it through whatever it is you know and we talk about it we if it's something we need to do we do it if something she she wants would like to have we we see how best we can get it to her you know and it's it's again it's all about Making her feeling comfortable to talk about everything and make her making her know that it is okay. You know, we're here for her, supporting her, you know, and you know, and it, it always worked out fine. It always worked out fine, you know, afterwards. Oh. Wouldn't you love to be in the conversation when her daughter when your daughter is talking to you? Yeah. Uh, uh, just amazing. So how about you, Faisal? Well, how do you lift up uh, your son? Great. What was that? Interesting. How do you lift up your ch uh, your children when they're not feeling their greatest? Well, that's um, that's an excellent question, right? Um, because I think we all have experienced that, and we all see that on a day to day basis at different levels, and and it can be really bad sometimes, or it can be mild. But you know, I, I saw Alex quoted me earlier today. Um, <laughs> I'm going to quote Alex um, a bit because I think it's important that our kids know that we're just there right whether whether we need to get directly involved all the time we just need to let them know they're not alone and they don't have to go through anything alone and so how do we lift them up we, we let them know that we're there and that we are open to hear anything that they have to say um, if they want advice we're there you know um, I used to go into my kids' room because I wanted to help them with their homework all the time. <laughs> and even when I knew they were struggling, even if I didn't know what they were doing, but they got to a point where they, you know, they would close their book or their computer because they just don't want the help. But they know that I'm there if they need help. Not that I can help them at all or not, but uh, you know, they, just for them to know that we're there, I think, is, is big. And sometimes they will come to us with a problem. Um, because they know the door is open, so I think I think for us it's just keeping the door open, letting them know it's open, and then and then it's just a different degree of how much we have to step in or not step in. Uh, beautiful. Um, I have my structured questions, and I'm going to encourage our people that are watching to put some questions in um, the chat because we will have time to answer a few questions at the end as well, please. So Sheila, on to you. What strategy or practices do you use to keep you in gratitude? And how do you fuel this in your life and community? So how do you radiate it out from yourself after you fuel yourself? Right, and that's a really, it's a great question. Um, it changes for me on how I fuel myself. First of all, how I keep myself grounded. I notice that when I fail to do these things, uh, my world starts unraveling a little bit, and that is a, a big reminder that it's time to get back back in my practices. And so some of the things that I do is I actually have a journal that I will sit down and I will write things that I'm grateful for. And I try and stay away from the low-hanging fruit grateful things, and I try and dig deeper than that. I try and dig 
to the really small things in my life that make a big difference. Sometimes I'm even talking about the smell of the candle or mm. my fuzzy warm socks that are on my feet. And I know that might sound a little silly because that's really not what we should be grateful for, but sometimes those are the things that make a big difference in our average day, especially if we're struggling or we're having an off day. Sometimes a warm blanket can be you know, a bit of a deal breaker, at least in my world. Um, it doesn't make things right, but it certainly makes me feel very grateful that I have such small blessings in my world um, because I'm fortunate to have some of these small things that maybe somebody else doesn't have. As far as how do I push that out into the community, and I don't do this all the time, um, but I have been known to do little cards, like little thank you cards and random notes that I put in people's mailboxes, oh. who I don't know. Um, and it might be things like how I love the beautiful tree that they have on their front yard, or I love their Christmas decorations, or their home reminds me of my parents' house back, back in our hometown. Little tiny things that I hope are going to make that person's day a little brighter and I'll never know but I have to assume that it's made a difference and so I try and do that and we've been known as a family to go and to do that as a family on our family walks is everybody has to write a card before we leave and then drop it into the mailbox of the house that that generates something that resonates with us um and so wow. I'll try and get you know my my boys pulled into that too so that's beautiful. And Faisal, and uh, to Robbie, I'm going to get Faisal to answer. I'm going to kind of flip a rephrase this question because, because you both are, well, Canada welcomed you, welcomed you and your family, welcomed you into our country. And how do you push gratitude for being, uh, we'll start with Faisal first, out to the community that you are grateful that we opened up our arms to you and your family? Well, there's a huge civic responsibility, I think, um, as a community. I mean, uh, there was a huge group of, I don't know if you know the history, but um, it was a large Ismaili community that left East Africa because of uh, Idi Amin in the late 70s and early 80s. And they came to Canada. And so um, we do as a community feel a huge indebtedness to Canada for bringing us in, for sure. And so there's a, um, a civic responsibility I think our community feels to give back and so we are very involved in uh, community service uh, giving back to our individual communities um, volunteering is a big part of our um, I guess uh, ethic um, giving time back and and then I, I will say um, you know again just to listen to my son talk this morning about how you have to be kind to be open to people and allow them to um, allow there to be no distance between you and anybody else, right? So I think that's super important uh, in terms of how you interact with the world. If you close yourself off, then you're not benefiting yourself or society at all. So you have to be open and be kind. And when you are kind, you know, I believe another philosophical tone here is you're a reflection of everything around. You only know yourself through people around you. If you were the only person in the world, you wouldn't know who you are. Mm. And so you are a reflection of someone, whatever, whoever you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with someone who's really angry and upset, you know, you have to, you will, that will be reflected somehow in you. And you have to bring out that kindness in them. And I feel like that's a real responsibility for all of us to do on a daily basis is, is to try and open up those channels and make there no there's, there should be no space where I where I end and you begin and when you end and I begin we're all one. It's the way I look at it. Wow. And so, Robbie, how have you had a sense of gratitude for Canada opening up its arms? And how long have you been in Canada now? Okay. First, I'm here ten years. It's seven years in BC. No. From day one, from, I, from I've gotten here, you know, I feel welcome, so welcome into this com country and appreciated that. And I appreciate the equal opportunities that I, that I receive. And through that, I am able to start a business here, a motivational speaking company. And the reason for that company is because of appreciation for for what I have my how I 
see life and what I would like to, how I would like to give back, give back to the country, give back to the people. And I've started a number of programs and all of these programs are aiming at giving back giving back to to the to the to, to the country to the people here you know I have an interview program that I do where I bring in people from all around me to come and talk and share their story right because I just like myself I realize we all have a beautiful sh story to share and we can use those st stories to inspire and help people too you know and those are ways that I I, 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 I give back, I, I do postings of similarly, you know, you know, daily inspiration to say, you know, I'm appreciative of these things, you know, value these things in your life, you know, enjoy your life just like I'm enjoying mine, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. You know, it's beautiful. I appreciate here, appreciate everyone. I appreciate. <laughs> oh, guys. yeah. We so appreciate you because we, when you say giving of your time and space, there's many people that do start a podcast and they wonder uh, how to find guests and how to be able to share their story. And a shout out to Fatima because I know you are watching right now um, that connected Robbie to us. And Robbie just said the fastest yes to be able to give back, to give of his space. So this is to give space for something to be created in is a huge give back um, to, to Canada. And we welcome your business here um, wholeheartedly in Canada with what you're doing. We need your business here in Canada. Thank you. Thank um, you. So now over to Bree. The next question, what have you noticed in your kids as you are raising them with a the mindset of being grateful and showing others appreciation? For us, being really, really mindful of it and, and speaking more about gratitude has been kind of a newer thing in the last five years or so. And so I really especially notice it in my daughter because she still lives with us at home, but I really notice it in the kids who come and go. It's, mm. like it, it's funny, like the ripple effect, like you, you kind of think it wouldn't happen because they're not living with you anymore. But it, I still see in them, like they, they seem lighter when they come in. They seem like they start talking about instead of, oh, I had a really rough week or this, that, or the other thing. They're like, you know, this really crazy good thing happened. And, and just seeing the focus shift to them talking about the good things instead of focusing on those negatives that they could easily, like other teenagers or people I hear talk, right? Like they're like, oh, my day was this and my day was that. And you can just feel their energy go down. They just seem lighter enough. And I find that the more that I hear them talk about it, the more I see their friends absorb it, right? And so then it, it kind of, like again, the ripples in the pond, right? So then their friends are all of a sudden, like instead of complaining about their day at high school, they're like, yeah, that really cool thing that happened today. And then it just kind of keeps carrying on. And so it's really neat to see them inspiring others and the way that they talk is different and the way that they hold themselves is different. And I even see it in their confidence level, like, you know, like the way that they control themselves and talk about themselves and, and shift how they come to the world is, it, it's amazing all the ripple effects that come from just being gratitude and being mindful of the things that you have or, you know, that you can make for others or help others and do for things that make you feel good. Beautiful question. You know what, guys, we're coming to the end. And to our Facebook people, um, you know that on Thankful Thursday Reflections, uh, where Robbie's been a guest and Faisal, you've been a guest and Sheila's been a guest. So, Brie, we're going to have to get you as a guest on Thankful Thursday Reflections. We always end where we put our right hand in the air. Everybody, right hand in the air, left hand in the air. We're going to rub it together to warm it up. We're going to do a half a heart, half a heart. And you know what, Robbie? We're going to do our half a heart because we're together. Yes. We're going to pump it. Can you see this? One, two. Oh, we're going to see it. Are we seeing it? More, more, more. Uh, I'm challenging Marshall right now. <laughs> hey, we have an opportunity to send out big kindness. Okay, we got it there, Marshall. Yeah. One, two, three. Kindness out to the world, everybody. Thank you so much 
to uh, coming back to me here. Thank you so much to our parents and um, to Sheila and Faisal and Bree and Robbie in studio here and to Marshall for my whims. Thank the kids. Oh, and thank you to your beautiful children that you are raising. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to say there's hope. There is living proof that you parents are doing a fantastic job. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. Thanks, everyone.